Hello, writers. One of the challenges of writing a research paper is how do I make this original? How do I make this into an original document that uses secondary sources? Well, it is a skill that has to be learned, and I want to give you some hints on how to do it today. First of all, you'll be using paraphrase, quotation, and summary. Now, summary is different from paraphrase. Uh, paraphrase can be the same length as an original, uh, as the original text. Uh, summary is always shorter. Summaries use both paraphrase and quotation. So let's start with paraphrase. How, how do you paraphrase a text properly? Well, the first thing is to make sure that you thoroughly understand the text and the point that the author is making. Then, when you, when you do understand what it is the author is saying and how you want to use it, look away from the text. If you're not looking directly at the text, it's much less likely that you will copy. And that is what we're trying to avoid because a paraphrase has to use not only your own vocabulary, your own words, but also your own sentence structure. So if you're looking away, again, it's unlikely that you will use that same sentence structure and that same vocabulary. You also always need to attribute the information. It should always be clear to the reader whose ideas you are talking about. When you finish the paraphrase, you can then go back to the original text and check to make sure that you've paraphrased accurately. And of course, finally, whether it's a paraphrase or a quote, you always must cite the source of anything that you take. Anything that you take from a text, you must cite unless that is what is called common uh, knowledge. Common knowledge would be something that's known to the average person and would be available through multiple sources but everything else needs to be cited. Now, there are mistakes that you can make when paraphrasing, and one of them is to use a thesaurus. If you're using a thesaurus when paraphrasing, you're probably going to improperly paraphrase. A paraphrase is not just substituting key words uh, or syn uh, substituting synonyms for key words. I often find uh, in papers that students have done this, and. And I, and I often know that they've done it because the synonyms they, they find don't quite fit. It sounds awkward and strained. So just use your own words to express what it is that the author was saying. All right, so we move on to how then to quote. Obviously, you have to use the exact wording. If in some cases there is a need to change something in order to make it fit into your sentence, then it is acceptable to make that change, but you must bracket anything that you change. If you've ever wondered why sometimes you see square brackets uh, inside a quote, that's what it means. It means that is not part of, the, that is not the exact wording. And you might do this to change a verb tense, for example, or to change, uh, you might need to use a capital letter where uh, a lowercase letter was used in the original. Uh, those things would go in square brackets. Also, make sure you use quotation marks correctly. Uh, remember that quotation marks always come in pairs. When I say pairs, I mean there's one at the beginning and there's one at the end. Uh, sometimes students forget to put in that closing quotation mark and it's hard to tell where the quote ends. Remember also that um, both periods and commas by convention in American usage always go inside the closing quotation mark. The best practice is to cite the source within your sentence. So, for example, uh, graph says or slaughter states uh, is better than simply making the quote and then putting the uh, author's name in the citation. It also makes it easier because often you don't need any further citation if it is a uh, website source. Quotes should generally be short. Uh, However, you can uh, use longer quotes, but use them sparingly. Uh, longer quotes would be blocked, and that means indented. So you go five spaces from the uh, from the left-hand margin. Um, if the uh, 
quote is the beginning of a paragraph, then it would be 10 spaces initially and five spaces for the rest of the uh, quote. Um, it's important to put quotes in context. You can't just drop them in and expect the audience to understand what the meaning of the quote is or how it fits into your argument. Uh, I copied this from the University of Illinois Library website because I think it, uh, it it's a very good explanation of what to do and what not to do. It says, don't quote a source without any explanation. It's called a dropped quote. It just sits in a paragraph on its own. Always explain where a quotation is from and why it's important. Analyze its language and explain its relevance to the research question you are pursuing. Basically, what they're saying is something that many experts suggest, which is to use a quotation sandwich. And the quotation sandwich, like a sandwich, has three parts. The bread on either end and the um, good stuff in the middle. Um, so what does this mean? Well, first of all, you have to introduce the quote. Uh, first of all, you have to introduce the quote. For example, you might say, Murray argues that four years of college is too much for most careers. So you're stating the point that you're going to, that the quote is going to support. Then, of course, you make the quote. So in this case, it might, the quote might be, quote, the occupations for which knowing enough requires 32 courses are exceedingly rare. Close quote. And then, you explain the quote by showing its importance or its relevance. For example, medicine and law are notable exceptions, but a plumber does not need four years of coursework. How much quote, quotation should you use? Well, you don't want to overuse it, but it's always a question of, um, you know, where do you draw the line? Uh, in general, most experts would say somewhere between, no, no more than 10 to 20% of a research paper should be quotation. I would say 20% would certainly be on the high end. So when should you use a quote and when should you paraphrase? Most of the time when you're, you're uh, using sources, you should paraphrase. But use a quote when you cannot adequately paraphrase, when there's no way really that you can use other words. You have to use the same words that the author did. Just put it in quotation marks. Make sure, uh, or, or also you can use uh, a quotation when the author's words uh, are particularly eloquent or effective, uh, when they say something better than uh, anything else could say it. Um, and thirdly, uh, if the author is a recognized authority, an expert in the field, uh, then it, it, it's useful to use a direct quote and attribute it to that expert. Integrating sources into your paper is, as I said, a skill that, that needs to be practiced and learned. Again, how do you be original when you're using sources? Well, it goes back really to your thesis. Your thesis governs everything in your paper. And your thesis is going to have main supporting points. In some um, classes, uh, teachers uh, instruct students to use the three-point thesis, and, and that's not a bad idea. It's kind of like using training wheels, but it's, it's not a bad idea. If you have three uh, points in support of your thesis, um, then that's pretty good. That's a good number, three. Uh, but use the sources to support each main point of your thesis. So if you're expressing your main point and then using various sources to support that point, uh, that is an original way to construct a paragraph. Be careful not to overuse one source. If you find yourself making an extensive summary of another author's article, then you may be in trouble. Uh, I'm not saying it would be plagiarism if you attribute it, but there needs to be more originality. You know, if you, if you, uh, if you use sources, uh, in a paper, uh, exclusively and paraphrased and, and your entire paper consisted of paraphrase and quotation, uh, and you appropriately paraphrased and you, uh, put the quotations in, in, 
in quotation marks in every case, it would not be plagiarism, but it also would not be a passing paper because you did no work on it other than to assemble uh, the information. And, and it's really a research paper is more than just uh, assembling. It's contributing your own uh, ideas uh, to the paper. Uh, it is effective to use more than one source to support a claim. So um, that is another way that you can avoid just summarizing a single author. So as I say, it is a complicated skill, but one that you can master with practice. And again, if you have any questions, please contact me.